it's 1.31, so let's go ahead and get started. We've got a lot of people online and some more people are probably gonna come on uh, as we start here, but uh, I'll just go ahead and kick things off. Um, thank you for being here, everyone. Welcome to the Go Perks Achievement and Best Workplaces for Commuters Awards. Uh, I'm sure this isn't the first Zoom or video conference call for most of you, um, and it, it might not even be your first one today, in fact. Uh, but just to let you all know, we have everybody muted, and you will not be visible to the other attendees. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please use the chat feature in Zoom. And finally, uh, the session is being recorded, and we will make it available for you to access afterwards. I'm Patricia Crane. Uh, I'm the Commuter Systems Specialist here at Go Triangle. I've been with Go Triangle since May of 2019, and I manage our Smart Commuting Incentives Program, Go Perks. Uh, so, what is a Smart Commuting Incentives Program? What is Go Perks? Uh, in a nutshell, every month we offer $400 in gift cards to local businesses uh, to encourage Triangle commuters to travel using alternatives to a single occupancy vehicle, what we call an SOV. Uh, now, these days, a lot of us are, of course, driving our single occupancy chairs uh, in our home offices or dining rooms, but under normal circumstances, um, alternatives to driving alone in a car are what you can see here. They include carpooling, van pooling, public transportation, uh, biking, walking, and, of recent, and you know, as of recently, telework. Uh, commuters track their trips using our online tool at Share the Ride NC, and they earn points for every time they track a smart commute. Uh, they use those points to enter into our monthly drawings, and they have a chance at earning rewards for cutting down on congestion and greenhouse gases. Today, we're here to honor the best of the best of our smart commuters, uh, as well as the employers, partners, and sponsors who make the Go Perks program possible. Uh, we'll be talking about how Go Perks and Share the Ride and See work, uh, the impact smart commuting has on the quality of our air and the quality of life here in the Triangle, and how we can carry our achievements through to the next decade. Since this year marks the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, uh, we've chosen to focus our awards on greenhouse gas reduction this year. But smart commuting has an impact on many other areas uh, besides greenhouse gas reduction. And Go Perks and Share the Right and See help us in myriad ways that we're going to touch on today. So uh, we're glad to have you all here with us. And without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to our esteemed guest, uh, Mayor Steve Shule of the great city of Durham to get things started. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Tricia. I really appreciate it. And it's great to be here today with all of the all-stars of the Go Perks Incentive Program. Uh, and I wanna congratulate all of the people who have participated, all the companies that have participated uh, it's just a super important and uh, and really imaginative and creative program that you all are participating in. And thank you to the Go Triangle staff, to you, Tricia, and others. And uh, it's it's just it's really good to be here with you all. As well as being mayor of Durham, I am on the board of Go Triangle and uh, have watched the organization grow and watched all the great additions that it's made to its services. And part of that has been this very important work of transportation demand management. We're here to celebrate the 15th year of the Regional Transportation Demand Management Program and the fifth year of the Go Perks Incentive Program. This innovative incentive program is the first of its kind in the nation. The Go Perks Program encourages individuals to change their commutes by supporting employees and the local economy simultaneously with gift cards purchased from local small mom and pop businesses through sponsorships and not government funds. Since the inception of the Go Perks program, commuters have, redu have reduced greenhouse gas emissions by 3.6 million pounds, including 18 tons of carbon dioxide, and reduced their commuting costs by nearly a million dollars. The program's benefits extend far beyond just those who participate. Decreasing household expenses and improved air quality benefit our entire Triangle community. So thank you to the sponsors who make this program possible, many of whom are on this call today, to the universities, the municipalities, the transit agencies who provide free employer consulting commuter services, and to more than 50 companies in Wake, Orange, and Durham counties, including my own city of Durham, that provide financial incentives for transportation to hundreds of thousands in the Triangle. Thank you for your corporate citizenship. 
Go Triangle Commuter Program improves the triple bottom line, creating prosperity and improving economic development while resulting in better air quality. Go Perks helps do it all. It's a winning combination worth celebrating and one that results in resiliency for the Triangle. So I wanna thank the staff of Go Triangle. I wanna thank the, all of you all who are involved in the Go Perks program and our transportation man, demand management work. It's essential. And I'm grateful for you all, and I'm happy to be here today with you. So thank you so much again, Tricia. Thank you so much. Uh, we are so glad that you could be here with us today. Uh, we truly appreciate your service to the city and as a dedicated advocate uh, for transit in the region. Uh, you're a member of the Go Triangle Board of Trustees, and you're a wonderful ally. We really appreciate everything that you do. Um, and since you, we know that you're an avid runner uh, in your free time, uh, if you ever do decide to run to work a few days a week, uh, we hope that you'll track those trips in Share the Ride and See. Because uh, if you track enough trips and earn enough points, uh, we could uh, maybe send you a prize through Go Perks. Mm, I love prizes, and uh, <laughs> I will, uh, I'll take you up on that. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We'll look forward to it. Uh, as Mary Schul said, the Go Perks program has been going on for over five years now. It started in 2015 as a way to incentivize smart commuting in the Triangle region. Uh, we keep things local and for years all of our monthly drawing prizes have been sourced exclusively from North Carolina businesses, usually locally owned. Um, and I'm sure, you know, if there's those commuters who are on the call today, uh, as I'm sure you could guess, uh, the most popular offerings for prizes are usually coffee shops and bakeries. Uh, so with Go Perks, our smart commuters can get their morning pick-me-up uh, with a reward that they earned by taking a car off the road, and that's a win-win. Uh, but Go Perks doesn't exist simply by the will and work of Go Triangle. We can do a lot, uh, but we can't single-handedly keep this program running. And the first layer of support comes from our employers in the region who work with us to offer their employees alternatives to driving alone to work every day. Uh, these names you see here are just some of the employers that we work with, and we want to say thank you to them today. Uh, many of the businesses offered here, uh, listed here, offer their employees the Go Pass, uh, which allows their employees free transport on all area buses. Uh, that's across the triangle: Go Raleigh, Go Durham, Go Cary. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, Chapel Hill Public Transit is already fare free to all riders, but the Go Pass gets you on all the other buses. Uh, the Green Go Triangle buses connect our cities, and employers who participate in the Go Pass program are laying out their resources to make it easier for their employees to move around the triangle. It's a fantastic benefit to offer, uh, and we're proud to partner with so many employers who recognize how important it is to make it easier for their employees to access, uh, to access public transit. The diversity and reputation of the employers here in our area are the main reasons why the Research Triangle of North Carolina is one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the country. Uh, these, these companies contribute to the Triangle's glowing reputation as a tech hub, and our high quality of life helps those employers attract the best and brightest employees to our region. Uh, we also have world-class universities, including our Go Perk sponsored Duke, and a thriving small business community. Uh, these employers fuel the heart of the triangle, uh, and they make it a place where people want to live, work, and play. Another layer of support for our programming comes from our TDM partners. Uh, now, this, this business is a very acronym heavy, so in case you're, you don't know, TDM stands for Transportation Demand Management. Mayor Shul mentioned it earlier. Uh, it essentially means applying strategies and guiding policies to maximize travel efficiency and options for people. Uh, Go Triangle's Employer Services Program works with our TDM partners to offer complimentary consulting services to businesses, residential communities, and commercial properties. Through our partnerships with NCDOT, various regional planning agencies, municipalities, and public transportation agencies, we provide companies with the tools, services, and guidance to develop commuting options that fit their organization's cultures. Commuter benefits are a growing area where employers can set themselves apart in terms of recruiting top talent. And we have a wealth of resources to help employers address mobility issues and stay competitive. Uh, our TDM mobility management consultant can do so much for your organization, uh, including surveys, outreach, tax subsidy and incentives education, 
and even training on Share the Ride NC, uh, which we're going to demonstrate in a moment. Uh, and perhaps, you know, most importantly, we can tell your employees about our solution uh, to the one thing that keeps most people from considering a carpool, which of course is the idea that you're going to be stranded if your schedule changes suddenly. Uh, we have an emergency ride home program that takes that worry away and we love to tell people about it. And of course, we're always thrilled to spread the word about the free Go Perks incentive program for our commuters. Investing in transportation demand management is a win-win-win. Uh, it helps your organization's bottom line, it helps your employees reclaim their commuting time, and it has a positive effect on environmental sustainability and overall quality of life in the Triangle. These are our partners who help make that possible. We have Commute Smart Raleigh, Unpark Yourself at Duke, Way to Go Durham, Go Chapel Hill, Go Triangle, Go RTP, uh, ECAP at NC Central, OCO in Orange County, NC State's Wolf Trails, CAP at UNC, and Green Trek at Wake Tech. Thank you to all of those partners for all the work that they do. And now, uh, this is, I'm a little biased, this is my favorite part, we come to our sponsors. Uh, these are the generous businesses in the Triangle that literally support Go Perks with funding. Due to the nature of our grant, Go Triangle can't use government grant funds to actually purchase the gift cards uh, that we send out to our fine commuters. So these companies have stepped in to fill that void. Uh, and without them, we literally wouldn't be able to run the program. We wouldn't have any gift cards to send without our sponsors. A lot of these names are names that you'll recognize as major employers and marquee names in the triangle. And we're so grateful to have their support. Um, the American Tobacco Campus has been a sponsor since the very beginning of Go Perks in 2015, as has Duke. Uh, Coca Booth Amphitheater came on board a year later, and they often donate tickets to events, and those are always so popular with our commuters. And I know that we're all really look, we're all uh, really looking forward to starting that up again. Uh, Springboard Promotions is a local company. Uh, they're a leader in promotional marketing items, and they've been a leading Go Perk sponsor for two years now, and we just love working with them. And we're very pleased to welcome Commute with Enterprise in their very first year of sponsoring Go Perks. Uh, Commute with Enterprise also partners with Go Triangle in our van pool program. So we're very happy to have them on board with Go Perks as well this year. Some of these sponsors also offer Go Pass to their employees. And that's a, a great example of how we all work together uh, to reach our common goals of greater employee satisfaction and reduced headaches on the road to work. Okay, now here's the part where I try and earn my paycheck. Uh, I don't think I could do that without at least mentioning that we're always looking for new sponsors. Uh, we make sure that our users and employers uh, know just how important our sponsors are, and we welcome any chance to add to our sponsors list. Uh, I can be contacted at any time to help bring your organization on board and review the impacts that every dollar makes by investing in the Go Perks program. We would love to be featuring your logo at our recognition event next year. This could be you. So give me, a, give me a call or send me an email. We'd love to have you. Since we're talking sponsors, uh, we'd like to take a minute to say thank you to SEACT, uh, the, South, uh, the Southeast Association for Commuter Transportation, uh, who have sponsored today's event. Their contribution has enabled us to upgrade our Zoom account, which is something that I'm sure at least a few of you have had to do over the past few months. Uh, and that allowed all of us to be here on the call today. Uh, we're especially appreciative since this is their second year sponsoring the Go Perks recognition event. And now for a little bit more information, I'm going to turn it over to Paul Straw, SEAC Secretary. Paul? Great. Yeah, thank you so much, Tricia. Um, so yeah, glad to tell you about um, ACT. So the Association for Commuter Transportation, or ACT, uh, it is an international association and leading advocate for commuter transportation and transportation demand management. We, we love that acronym. Uh, commuting by bus, train, rideshare, bike, walking, or telework improves our world by contributing to energy independence, better air quality, livability, mobility, and reduced congestion. Through advocacy, education, and networking events, ACT strives to improve the lives of commuters, the livability of communities, and the economic growth of businesses. The Southeast chapter of ACT, or, or SEACT as we like to call ourselves, represents organizations from nine states and Puerto Rico. Our chapter is incredibly diverse and representative of the many organizations, employers, and universities that share ACT's vision of creating a better journey for everyone. 
on your screen, we can see a list of the Southeast organizations associated with ACT. And I'm very proud to say that North Carolina and the Triangle region are very well represented. The SEAC chapter is so happy to help sponsor and be part of this event today. The programs that we're talking about and learning about today are steps in the right direction, but there's always more that we can do. So ACT hosts numerous conferences, summits, webinars, and forums throughout each year. And although 2020 has presented uh, quite the variety of challenges, to say the least, uh, we've been able to bring our members together and learn from each other and establish important network connections through these events. There are still two big conferences left this year, and SEAC chapter is proud to offer scholarship opportunities to these conferences. The ACT International Conference has moved from Denver uh, to a virtual event, which we're bummed about, but it'll be held in August from uh, August 3rd to 5th. Uh, and the TDM Forum is still scheduled in Atlanta uh, this November, and we always love it when a conference is on our turf. Uh, so SEAC is offering scholarships for members and non-members to help with the cost to attend these events, either virtually or in person. And lastly, I wanted to touch upon how ACT has established a national certification program for TDM professionals. This program supports the continuing education and professional development that enhances the knowledge and performance of local, state, federal, private sector, and nonprofit TDM professionals. This certification program lays the foundation for ensuring that highly qualified individuals are available to meet the challenges of addressing and the diverse needs of commuters, communities, and employers. Uh, enrollment begins later this year, and SEAC will be offering several scholarships towards this program. So to learn more about ACT, SEAC, all the scholarship opportunity, opportunities that are being offered, and everything exciting that's happening in the world of TDM, please visit seacchapter.com. All right, thank you, Trisha. Thank you, Paul. Uh, we appreciate you sharing the information on ACT and SEAC here today, and uh, thank you again to SEAC for sponsoring today's event. Uh, Paul wears many hats here at Go Triangle, uh, but his biggest hat with the widest brim is his work managing the Share the Ride NC program. Uh, now, it's important to note that Share the Ride NC is a statewide site that houses various programs throughout North Carolina. Uh, it's used by thousands of commuters to help them find popular commuting alternatives to driving alone, and it's also the home of Go Perks. Uh, this will be familiar to our commuters here on the call today, uh, but for our attendees who aren't currently tracking their trips in Share the Ride NC or participating in Go Perks, uh, we're going to go through a quick demonstration of how easily it actually works. Uh, Share the Ride NC is pretty nifty, and as you'll see, it helps us gather a lot of really valuable data. So here we see the commute calendar on Share the Ride NC, and it really couldn't be easier to use. Uh, users simply drag and drop their commutes onto the calendar. And there they go. As they add their commutes day by day, they receive real-time updates on miles traveled, money saved, calories burned, and greenhouse gas reduction, uh, which is a metric that we'll be highlighting today. You can see the dashboard here up at the top. It's their personalized feedback uh, based on their actions. Uh, it, it updates and lets them know in real time uh, what they've done, showing the difference that their choices are making in their wallets, uh, their health, and their community. With each smart commute trip that they track, GoPerks users earn points. Uh, those points can, can then be used to enter into prize drawings. Uh, it's as simple as finding your favorite prize, uh, then clicking the button to enter the prize drawing. Click, and there you are. Uh, each month we offer a variety of prizes to local restaurants, shops, and businesses. And there are more ways to simplify the process. Uh, Share the Ride and See is an app available on the Android and iOS platforms. Everything you see here can be done from your phone. Uh, we're constantly improving the app and making the trip tracking process as easy as possible. We want people to use it, so we wanna make it as easy as we can for them. Uh, and in the coming months, we'll be releasing an update that allows users to automatically track trips. Uh, commuters' mobile devices will be smart enough to know when a work commute is happening, uh, and it'll save the trip details for the commuter. Uh, so it couldn't be easier than that. Uh, let your phone track your trip for you, and maybe it'll earn you a prize from one of our local businesses. Now, these local businesses, uh, many of which are recommended by our GoPerks users, are so important uh, to the GoPerks program. Part of our work in TDM is fostering a sense of pride and investment in our communities. And so we take the funds from our generous sponsors and put them right back into the local economy by buying local. 
And let's be real, if I told you that you could get a free biscuit or a free taco by taking a carpool a few days a week or riding the bus a couple times a month, wouldn't you want that free biscuit, the free taco? I mean, I think, I think that we all would, we could all use a free biscuit. And these days it's more important than ever to support our local economy and small businesses. Uh, so we're so happy to be able to be a part of that with our Go Perks program. Now Go Perks and Share the Ride and See give us a plethora of statistics on how folks are moving around the triangle. I don't wanna to throw too many numbers at you, uh, but the next couple of slides are gonna show some of the data that we can gather. Uh, for example, here are all of the trips tracked in Share the Ride and See since 2015. Uh, you can see that the numbers generally trend up, uh, meaning that we're gathering more data every year. Every single person who tracks a trip of any type uh, is helping us bring hard numbers when we need to make a case for smarter commuting, maximizing return on investment for the DOT, and demonstrating the full impact of behavior changes. In 2019, smart commuters who track their trips and share the ride NC saved nearly $230,000. Uh, and since the launch of GoPerks in 2015, they've saved nearly a million dollars total. A million dollars. That's money in their pockets, and that money goes right back into the local economy. Uh, here's some information on miles traveled and environmental impacts. It's something we always have to be thinking about in TDM. And according to the EPA, transportation is the largest single source of air pollution in the United States. It accounts for between 25 to 50% of all air pollutants. And the reduction of single occupancy vehicles is one of the easiest ways that we can improve the environment. Uh, now, 2019 was a record-breaking year for Go Perks, and our active commuters dominated the stats. Um, active commutes being biking, walking, maybe a, a couple of rollerbladers in there. I, I know there's still, still people rollerblading out there, and some of them use it to get to work. Um, obviously, there are a lot of benefits to being more active. And the miles uh, walked and biked by our active commuters in 2019, this is, this is a fun fact, this is real. Uh, the miles walked and biked by our commuters in 2019 are the equivalent of walking all the trails in Umstead Park 759 times. It's a lot of trail walking. And um, speaking of the environment, since its inception, the Go Perks program has resulted in 3.6 million pounds of greenhouse gas reduction, as Mayor Shul mentioned at the top of the hour here. Um, a number like that, 3.6 million pounds of gases, that can be hard to picture. Um, so try it like this. If the pounds of greenhouse gases saved were converted into biscuits, breakfast biscuits, free biscuits that you can get with your GoPerks rewards, um, if all of those greenhouse gases that we've saved were converted into biscuits, Go Perks has saved us from having over 16 million biscuits flying around in our atmosphere here in the Triangle over just five years. And I know 16 million biscuits sounds delicious, but honestly, it would be a headache. You, you just, you don't need that on your way to work. Um, so we love to do math. Uh, we love to do math. So we've done the math for you here. And you can see the commute modes by their percentages. This is, this is how it broke down for 2019. And again, I'm really impressed by our active commuters making up half of the commutes here, um, biking and walking together 50%. And keep in mind that these statistics only show us the folks who are reporting in Share the Ride NC. So the numbers could be even better, um, but we've got to get folks to track their trips and earn their Go Perks rewards. Uh, if we can get them in there, then we have more data that we can bring with us. Again, if it's not clear to you yet, we love statistics, um, and so does the DOT. So here are some more stats compiled uh, by TJ Cog, the Triangle J Council of Governments. Uh, this is from the regional perspective for their FY 2019 TDM impact report. Uh, you can take a look at these. Personally, I love the one about how many people uh, used alternative modes of transport in 2019. Um, if all of those folks drove alone, uh, their cars would stretch bumper to bumper for 171 solid miles. And that's pretty much all the way from Rocky Mount to Charlotte. Uh, that's a lot of cars to <laughs> take off the road. So we are grateful that they did such a good job in 2019. Uh, now, we love hearing from our smart commuters, and on the screen here, you'll see a small sample of some of the recent testimonials that we received, but we wanted to hear more, uh, so we reached out to some of the winners of our Go Perks Achievement Awards and asked them what the program means to them. 
uh, through their smart commuting choices, these champions truly made a positive impact on our region. They rode the bus, they carpooled and vanpooled. Uh, they rode their bikes, they walked. I'm pretty sure there's some rollerbladers and uh, sometimes they worked from home. And together they made a huge impact in 2019. Uh, they saved more greenhouse gases than any year that we've tracked so far. Uh, and many of them got some awesome Go Perks rewards as a thank you along the way. Uh, now, as we watch this video, keep in mind that as with so many things over the past three months, uh, we shot all of these testimonials via Zoom. Uh, so we want to thank you, a special thank you to these smart commuters for welcoming us into their living rooms, their laundry rooms, and their front porches. Uh, so let's hear what they have to say about Go Perks. Let me go ahead and share this video with y'all. So I became an alternative commuter about, I guess, about three and a half years ago. We had moved here to the whole Triangle area uh, four years ago and I started taking the bus then. The parking was really expensive and so I decided to start smart commuting and I explored taking the bus. So my employer has helped uh, support my commuting choices in that they offer a go pass for a very discounted rate. They definitely also, anytime you have any sort of orientation, new employees, they definitely promote that as a way to get to work, which is pretty nice. I don't have to pay for a parking pass on campus, and they subsidize the cost of bus fare. They do things like, hey, buses are free, and hey, here's a pass so you can ride all the way from Durham or Raleigh or wherever into work. I think my favorite part about commuting on the bus is that it's time that I can work if I want to because there's Wi-Fi, and so I have that option to still be productive, but really I use that time to just read, decom either gear myself up for the workday or decompress coming home. Just a good downtime, just enjoying the sun, the clouds, the trees. It gets me out, and I get to exercise, and I get to actually work while I'm in transit versus when I drive, I have to focus on the crazy. Commuting by bus is kind of a reward in itself. And so the Go Perks incentives are actually just the icing on the cake. I like that they um, reward people for doing alternate transportation, being acknowledged that we do it and um, can get rewarded for, for that. Uh, it turns my commute into a bit of a game, like, oh, how many points did I get this month? Um, what kind of rewards can I get? And Go Perks um, will tell me how much gas I've saved by using the bus or by choosing a carpool. So it's nice that Go Perks recognizes telecommuting as one of the options, because even though we aren't using the transit, we are still helping the environment, helping my car insurance, helping the life of my car, and I'm getting prizes for it. It's a win-win, win. It is a family endeavor. To use smart commuting involves everybody. And the fact that we have these little perks that come in at the end of the month means my kids are part of the process. And they know that they're gonna to get to help choose which drawing we enter. Um, that makes it a little easier to get everybody out the door on time in the morning and keep our schedule so that everything holds together. I, I really love the Go Perks prizes. I think um, the, the, the choices are these, you know, these great local restaurants and other places. There's always a really large selection of items to choose from. It's not, you know, McDonald's or something that you can find anywhere. It's unique local places. On my commute, I can actually use the um, reward that I've won. You know, not having to face the traffic on I-40, saving money on fuel and maintenance on my car, uh, saving money on parking on campus, and go perks. Um, it's, it's a nice way to just help encourage people away from taking their cars to work. Uh, again, thank you to all of our smart commuters uh, for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, these folks have all made an impact by choosing a different way to get to work. Uh, we're proud to work with our sponsors, our TDM partners, and area employers uh, who help us you know, get all of this programming out there and get the word out to people. Uh, so thank you again to everybody who spoke with us. Uh, and they can, it shows us uh, the impact of changing their behavior. 
Uh, so speaking of changing behavior, take a look at this dog here. Um, he's illustrating a very common phenomenon in human behavior, uh, the sunk cost fallacy. He's been digging for his bone in that one spot for so long uh, that he can't even consider other options. And that's uh, kind of like most Americans uh, who hardly ever question why we have to drive everywhere in our cars. Those of us in transportation demand management are like the second dog, uh, the one suggesting that there might be a better way. This comic is part of a great series called Behavioral Economics for Dogs by the Center for Advanced Hindsight. And that's just a very small part of the amazing work that they do. Uh, through research, publication, and yes, adorable dog comics, uh, the Center for Advanced Hindsight uses behavioral insights to tackle challenging problems at home and abroad. Here to talk with us today is Lindsay Gavin, a behavioral researcher at the Center for Advanced Hindsight. Uh, Lindsay, I'm going to hand things over to you. I will make you the host. If you go ahead and share your screen, we can get things started and maybe hear a little bit more about uh, that little dog's problem. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, my name is Lindsay Gavin. I'm a behavioral researcher at the Center for Advanced Hindsight. And I'm gonna talk about behavioral science and TDM and some insights into behavior change and the triple bottom line. So the Center for Advanced Hindsight, you may know, is Dan Ariely's Applied Behavioral Science Research Lab at Duke. We're based on American Tobacco Campus, but we're a Duke lab. And our work really centers on designing and testing solutions to make people happier, healthier, and wealthier. And we work in the areas of health behavior, financial decision making, and government, which is the team that I work on. Um, we are looking to bring innovation and experimentation to government-based programs. And like I kind of touched on, our work is really based at the intersection of being academic, but also really being on the ground applied and innovative. And we combine concepts from behavioral economics with principles of human-centered design. And we always employ rigorous evaluation methods to understand what interventions that we're taking from sort of those first two categories really work to solve problems once they're deployed on the ground. So like I said, today I'm gonna to be speaking a bit about behavior, transportation, and a kind of reimagination of the triple bottom line. So let's begin with the problem, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. 15% uh, of America's annual emissions come from car transportation or SOV transportation. It's larger when we account for other forms of transportation and movement across the country, but about 15% is from individual car transportation. We know that the future of commuting can't lie in single occupancy vehicles, but we also know that this problem is largely behavioral, and that's good news because there's a lot of really well-established theories that we can deploy to try to solve behavioral aspects of this problem to this transportation context. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a background on behavior change. Um, Economists and a lot of scientists often like to think of people as being the ultimate rational actor, much like Mr. Spock. Um, we think that they can gather all information possible, that they can account for probabilities, that they can accurately measure costs and benefits against each other, that they maximize their own utility, and that their preferences are stable over time. However, we know in the real world, people make decisions a little bit more like Homer Simpson. Um, people tend to do what's right over, or what's easiest over what's always right. They're hyper-focused on the present, and this present bias is a huge barrier in the environmental world, because arguably climate change feels very far out in the future to a lot of people and it's hard for it to really be tangible. People are also egocentric and they're cognitive misers, which means that they want to solve problems in a simple and easy way rather than using a lot of complex brain processing to do so most of the time. And we're inherently social, so that means we're greatly influenced by what other people do. The main takeaway is that humans are irrational um, and we normally think of the triple bottom line as a framework applied to corporations and large organizations like many of you work for. Um, so how can companies sort of balance maximizing profit with giving proper weight to their impact on people and on the planet? 
I'm going to speak about these concepts a little bit differently as I study individual decision making. So how do each of these three areas really apply to individual behavior? Um, we're going to look at a couple of key behavioral science concepts under each of these three areas. So beginning with the environment or planet, there's kind of three major concepts that highlight why behavior change when it comes to the environment is so difficult. The first one I touched on a little bit earlier, hyperbolic discounting means that we tend to overvalue the here and now and really undervalue the future, which is a huge issue, as I mentioned, when it comes to valuing climate change. Uh, secondly, the action goals gap or action intentions gap means that a lot of people really intend to act sustainably but have trouble following through on those intentions. And finally, status quo bias we're probably all familiar with, um, but behavior change is really hard, especially when it comes to ingrained habits like commuting, because people tend to want to keep doing the things that they're already doing. So looking at that finance or economics part um, of the triple bottom line, a few applicable concepts uh, include the power of free. So you may have heard of this applied to a candies experiment where people will choose a free candy over a heavily discounted but higher quality candy, even though the actual economic value that you're getting is less by getting the free candy. Secondly, loss aversion, the idea that losses loom larger than equivalent gains. So people are often more motivated by not losing something than by gaining it. And finally, as was mentioned on my intro slide, the sunk cost effect means that once we've invested in a decision, it's really hard to abandon that decision. Looking at the third area of the triple bottom line is social or people. Um, just two really important concepts are self-signaling, so the idea that we behave in ways that reinforce the person that we want to be or who we think we are. So if I think I am a sustainably minded person, I'd like to act in ways that reinforce that. And secondly is just hurting this idea of social norms um, that people tend to do what other people are doing. And so because of these and other cognitive biases, we know that providing information alone doesn't necessarily lead to behavior change and that it's really our environment that shapes the decisions that we make and how we behave. So knowing this, what can we do? Um, well, there are broadly two main categories of strategies that we can implement to actually shape the decision making environment that people are in. Um, how do we motivate people to make the decisions that we want them to make? like using alternative or smart commute modes. Broadly, we can add fuel or we can reduce friction. Um, and adding fuel might mean adding incentives. These could be financial incentives or a lot like the Go Perks incentives, things that people want um, that will motivate them to change their behavior. And it could also be how we, inf how we frame the information that we give people. So, for example, a loss aversion framing, like I mentioned earlier, this idea that losses loom larger than equivalent gains, we might frame the decision we want people to make as missing out on something if they don't make that decision. And the second way we broadly shape the decision-making environment is by reducing friction from the choices that we want people to make. Now, this could also be adding friction to the choices that we don't want people to make. So, how can we make it easier for people to commute by sustainable modes or harder to drive alone? Um, and a big example in the friction space is switching the default. So people in general want to avoid making complex decisions and really avoid making decisions at all. Um, you may have seen this applied to organ donation. If you're defaulted into checking a box for organ donation, that area's um, donation levels increase significantly. So how can we apply some of these approaches to altering the decision-making context when it comes to personal transportation? I'm just going to do a very quick run through of a couple of recent experiments that we've run in conjunction with some partners. This is going to be real rapid fire, so if anyone's interested in learning more about any of these, please reach out to me afterwards. Um, firstly, Many of you may have heard about the work that we've done with the city of Durham as part of the mayor's challenge. 
Uh, we've tested a strategy to reduce friction by providing people with personalized routes between their home and their workplace. And we've run two field experiments testing this and have a few more launching soon, but we're seeing some promising results thus far in terms of reducing SOV commutes. We've also tested this concept of pre-commitment. So a lot of studies show that committing to a specific and detailed action in the future is more likely to motivate action and decrease procrastination. So we ask people to commit to sustainable transportation at a specific frequency. Um, and this study was a short one, but initial results look like this commitment has helped increase the proportion of people willing to try alternative transportation. And we know that that first behavior is often the hardest one to really, uh, overcome. We've done some survey-based lab testing looking at the power of free as applied to transportation alternatives and found that people were more willing to reduce SOV trips when given a free transit pass than when paid an incentive to use an alternative mode. So places that have go passes are really, really harnessing this great um, power of free idea. So we also looked at loss aversion and the planning fallacy in that same lab test I just mentioned. Um, are people willing to reduce their SOV trips when given a monthly incentive framed as either a loss or a gain? And what happens if we ask them to imagine what they would do with that incentive? And we see that it does look like losses appear to be more motivating to people than gains. And that's especially true if we've asked people to visualize what they would do um, with that incentive. This one's set to go live next month, but um, that sunk cost effect is really apparent in parking. So how can we counter the sunk cost effect of buying an annual parking permit and treating it like an all-you-can-eat buffet? So what if we switch annual permits to daily parking charges so that people kind of have the flexibility to not drive and not pay some days? Um, again, this is Still set to go live, so we don't know about the effectiveness yet, but happy to keep everyone updated on that. Um, Another is looking at the influence of the fresh start effect as applied to using alternative transportation. So research shows that the timing of major life events is really ripe for influencing behavior change. Um, so can we test interventions aimed at reducing SOV commuting on new movers? And this we're hoping to run in the next year or so. So we'll have some information or some results from that um, probably by this time next year. And finally, one that is really um, we're all experiencing right now is remote working. Um, so we ran a global study or a global survey had over 45,000 responses, including about 400 responses from City of Raleigh employees. Um, so we're looking at right now, it looks like after COVID, even after COVID subsides, a lot of people are looking to balance their work hours between their home and their main office much more than they were working before COVID. Um, so we're looking at what are the challenges that people are encountering a lot of people reporting this challenge, being challenged by a lack of human interaction and feeling disconnected from their teams. So there are a lot of behavioral science um, interventions that we can deploy to try to overcome those challenges and make people more comfortable and happy remote working. So all this to say changing behavior is really hard, but there are a lot of strategies that have proven effective in other areas. Um, that really hone in on that idea of the triple bottom line, but applied to personal decision making. And there's tons of room for creativity in this area. So that's how please reach out to me if you have any questions um, or any interest in this area. We're happy to chat with area employers and everybody on this call. So we love hearing what's going on also. And thank you again to Go Triangle for having us here today. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for, for talking about that. And uh, you did uh, touch on something uh, that's very important here. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's, it's probably time to go ahead and talk about uh, the elephant in the room, uh, the, the reason that we're not uh, gathered in a lovely place, um, you know, having lovely snacks uh, somewhere right now, and that would be um, 
COVID-19, obviously. Uh, but clearly the pandemic has changed the face of commuting in the US and around the world. And the triangle was certainly no exception. Uh, more and more employers around the country have seen the benefits of having their employees work from home. Uh, the specter of reduced productivity uh, proved to be an empty suit, so to speak. And we're likely to continue seeing increased flexibility and accommodation from employers around the world as the data comes in. Um, and we are gathering that data. Uh, in the past, the only way to gather hard numbers on telework was to survey employers. Uh, but with Share the Right and See, we get that information directly from the workers, from the employees themselves. And uh, GoPerks users have been able to earn points uh, and enter drawings with telework since April. Um, and in 2020 alone, our users have tracked 232% more telework trips uh, than in all of last year. Uh, and that's more than what we saw in 2015 through 2019 combined. So just in these last few months, uh, they've exceeded the entire past five years of telework. So it's clearly something that's changing. Uh, and things are gonna be uh, around here. And Lindsay mentioned uh, part, of, part of the problem with teleworking is things that people report uh, be feeling disconnected. Um, I know that I've been tracking a lot of teleworking trips uh, over the past few months myself. We've been working from home as everyone on my team. Uh, we check in daily um, and I'm just so proud of everyone involved uh, with making Go Perks so successful. Uh, and we're here today again, to, uh, to celebrate the most important part of that success. We've talked about our employers, we've talked about our partners and our sponsors. Uh, now we're gonna talk about the commuters. Uh, this year for our Smart Commute Champions, uh, we decided to recognize significant milestones in greenhouse gas reduction. Uh, and we sent out gold, silver, and bronze coins to our winners. Uh, I'll show you them to you in a moment here. Uh, these, these incredible achievers uh, whose names we're about to see they all together saved nearly 730,000 pounds of greenhouse gases in 2019 alone. Um, and they saved nearly $200,000. Uh, so we wanna take a few moments to highlight and acknowledge all of these wonderful commuters. Here we can see the name of our uh, bronze coin winners. All of these people saved at least two tons of greenhouse gases last year. Here's an example of the coin that we sent out to them. I hope you can see it. It's really, really pretty. I love this one. This is, might be my favorite color. Um, this is too many names to read out loud, um, but I know that a lot of you on the call today might be looking for your name uh, as I speak. Um, so if you find your name on there, yay, and thank you. Two tons of greenhouse gases saved a piece. Uh, these are our silver coin winners. Uh, here's the silver coin. And these folks each saved at least five tons of greenhouse gases in 2019. Uh, choosing to carpool, bike, or take transit can really add up to some serious numbers over a year. Um, and just to go back to a previous example, uh, each of the names on this screen that you're looking at right now, they saved the triangle from the equivalent of over 45,000 flying biscuits apiece. Uh, floating around in the atmosphere. That's five tons of greenhouse gases, 45,000 biscuits, and you can see we've got a lot of people on here. Um, and it's difficult to express uh, how impressive it is to individually save 10 tons of greenhouse gases. Uh, it's, it's just so many biscuits. Our gold winners are truly in a class of their own. Um, the gold coin is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's got a nice weight to it. I clink them together a little bit. They're just, they, they turned out so beautifully and we were so glad that we were able to give them out to so many people. Uh, you guys were just champions this year. Um, and looking at this, you know, I can't see your faces right now, but I, I can picture that, you know, at least a few of you have that, uh, that glint in your eye, the gold medal stare. Uh, so I hope that we've convinced you to really go for it in 2020. Uh, we'd love to see more people on the gold on the gold list uh, next year. So go ahead and level up if you can. You're already doing a great job, so just keep it up. Uh, we asked our smart commuting medalists to send us uh, photos and we're so happy to have received so many. Uh, here's just a few of them. Uh, you guys made 2019 our best year yet for Go Perks uh, across the board and you made a huge impact on the world around you. So again, just congratulations to all of our medalists. Thank you. A lot of our champions had the support of their employers as they made their smart commutes in 2019. And as a final part of our program today, the last few minutes, uh, we'll focus on some of the work being done by the best workplaces for commuters. Uh, that's a membership organization that recognizes employers who are going above and beyond to make getting to work a better experience for their employees. 
Uh, here to talk to us today about that is Suchi Gupta. She is the program coordinator in energy and environment at the Triangle J Council of Governments. Take it away, Suchi. Yeah, thank you, Patricia. And uh, before I start, I wanted to apologize. I think I'm facing some of the remote more challenges. My video, I don't know why, it kept on flickering off and on without me doing anything. And I texted Paul that, is he noticing? Paul said, no, everything was fine, but I found it very annoying. <laughs> you know, so I'm sorry. I apologize if that was distracting and I'm sure it's annoying. <laughs> so uh, my name is Shuchi, as Patricia, Patricia said, and actually I'm substituting for Mary Sell, who is the um, best workplaces for commuters, so BWC, coordinator at TJ Cog, um, but uh, Mary decided to step down because she has two young kids and she was finding it hard to have the work-life balance. Um, so, so here I am making the presentation. When I looked at it, I was like, this shouldn't be hard <laughs> uh, to do at a moment's notice. And uh, uh, so before we talk about the BWC, I wanted to take an opportunity uh, to talk about both BWC and the Mode Makers State Program. You can see the slide up there, which says Mode Makers State Program launch. So BWC is a program which has been a part of TJ Cog and the Triangle area for a long time. For those of uh, you who are present here and may not know, the first best workplaces for commuters list was released by EPA in 2002. It was a program which was run by EPA back then in 2007, EPA handed it over to Qatar, CUTR, Center for Urban Transportation Research in Florida, and Qatar has been running it since then. So it's a national level program. Uh, and then the regional TDM programs, they take that national level program and amplify it and promote it. And we have had a regional kind of a BWC program. It had been run by TJ Cog until 2007. And then uh, it went over to Go Triangle. Go Triangle ran it from 2007 to 10. And then the program um, just didn't happen for four years. And then TJ Cog took over it again or reestablished it in 2014. And it has been with TJ Cog since then. And I believe Mary had been running it since then. So that's the history of BWC program. And now we have the state um, the Mode Makers State Program. This is an NC State Program, and this was developed in the last year, 2019. So what happened was that there were a few gaps which were prohibiting the businesses and the organizations in the Triangle area to adopt the BWC program. And um, listening to that feedback from the employers and organizations, uh, NCDOT and other partners, they decided to have a recognition program of their own for the state of North Carolina. DOT kind of gave its blessing in 2018 and over the entire 2019, TJ Cog worked collaboratively with the other TDM programs in the state, uh, City of Charlotte, Sustained Charlotte, Land of Sky, Regional Council, City of Wilmington, Piedmont Authority for Digital Transit, some of you know as part. So all of them, you know, they, they've collaborated and contributed towards developing this program. And thanks so much to all of them. And the program was supposed to be launched in January 2020. And while Mary was still trying to figure out how to do it the right way, uh, COVID hit us and then everything had to stop. We were able to do a uh, brief launch at the NC State TDM webinar, which was organized, a training webinar, which was organized by DOT just this month. And this is technically the first time that we are bringing it out in front of a large audience. Uh, so, so that's the background. And um, before we still move on to the another slide, I wanted to talk about two things. You know, the reasons, as I mentioned, that there were reasons that this program was needed. There were two key gaps which were being faced by employers in the state and the Triangle region, which was preventing a wider uptake of the TDM program. One, the BWC program has an administrative fee of $190 annually that it charges to cover administrative costs such as flags, webinars, 
customer service support. And that fee was proving to be a lot for some of the smaller employers, smaller businesses. And the second thing was BWC has just one standard of excellence, um, uh, which the employers must achieve in order to be recognized as BWC employers. Because sometimes, especially the smaller employers or organizations, they, they're not ready to go all the way, but, but they're, they're ready to a certain extent, but not ready to go all the way. And, and understanding these things, those were the two key things which led to the development of this program. And the way it was addressed was, so the new program has got three levels. It's a tiered level recognition program, bronze, silver, and gold. And that uh, we felt would help those businesses who were willing to embark on the recognition program but were not ready to go all the way. And I would be talking in the next few slides about the requirements for the organizations to achieve these three levels. I just wanted to mention that um, our program is based loosely upon uh, our LinkedIn's similar kind of a program called Champions. They also have a tiered level of recognition. And the second thing is this program has no fee. So we took away completely that barrier of enrollment cost that was being faced uh, by some of the employers. Uh, so bronze is the first level of recognition. Um, and then there are three requirements, any employer, any organization which can meet with these three requirements you know, is eligible to have that bronze level recognition. The first is meet with the transportation coordinator for your market, participate in the commute survey or the baseline information, whatever is relevant to your area and provide at least one transportation benefit from the list. The list has about 11 different benefits. So the employer could provide whatever, you know, works for his or her staff. And then is the silver level. Silver requires the requirements of the bronze plus three uh, in addition to the bronze, so they are required to organize one on-site transportation event. It could be a tabling event, a bike to work day, or anything that the employer seems appropriate. Then to include the transportation information on-site, and instead of one, which is the requirement for the bronze level, they need to provide just a total of three transportation benefits from the list below. And then the gold level is the highest level of recognition. This is silver plus have a minimum of 10% of the employees um, or the commute trips be the SOV, non-SOV trips or non-single occupancy vehicle trips. And instead of the three transportation benefits, which is a requirement for the silver level, this requires that five transportation benefits be provided to the employees. So these are, I know I'm speaking probably very fast, and uh, these are the three different uh, levels, and we have them put in a uh, one-page brochure, and uh, we have digital files for that. Um, I'm happy to provide the digital files to anybody who might want to send those out to the employers or the businesses in their area, and I believe these have, the flyer has already been shared with the coordinators of the TDM programs, the five ones, Charlotte, Land of Sky, Wilmington Park already. And uh, you can reach out to them or, or we are happy to do the same. And since no outreach events are really happening now because of COVID, uh, we didn't have a chance to get them printed, but we do have a small printing budget. So as things will evolve when we get back to a new normal, I think we should be able to get those printed and you know, uh, send them to you. And then, um, so that was the end of my presentation. And before, before I really end, this is the list of 2020 awardees. And we have got 32 organizations here. And I wish we could have the drum roll. Ta <laughs> and all these 32 employers, uh, they have been amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, they were, um, they are the best workplaces for commuters, employers, and they're also eligible for the gold level of the mode makers program, we decided to just go ahead and start doing it. You know, um, so many congratulations and thank you for your commitment uh, to provide those excellent commuter benefits for your employees. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions or hand it over to Patricia.
Okay. Uh, thank you, Suchi. I'm afraid we, we, we don't have time uh, for, uh, for questions right now. I know that we've gone a little bit over and we just got a few minutes here. Uh, we'll wrap things up really quickly. Uh, but thank you for, uh, for being with us, Suchi. Thank you so much for the recognition there uh, for those great employers. Um, now, real quick here at the end, a lot of you uh, might recognize this photograph. It was taken in India uh, near the beginning of the lockdowns. And it's, uh, it's the Himalayas visible for the first time in decades uh, as, a res as a result of reduced air pollution in April. Um, that this is a real example of what can happen when we reduce our, our emissions. You know, obviously things are gonna go back to, to no normal or a new normal uh, eventually. It's already sort of happening here. And, you know, um, congestion and air quality, poor air quality, they'll continue to get worse if we don't do something about it. Uh, but this is a clear example of what's possible when we have fewer cars on the road. And, and that's what we're working toward um, with the help of our sponsors, partners, uh, area employers, and individuals making smart choices. Uh, we can create a cleaner, brighter future. And I'm just so glad to be part of such an organization and so many partners here that are working so hard for this. Um, we have a lot of programming available for employers and commuters. Uh, so if you have any questions, please reach out to us. If you'd like to learn more about our employer services, go to gotriangle.org slash employer services. And we also have links to our outstanding TDM partners in the region. Uh, so if you'd like to know more, just reach out to us. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about anything you've seen today, uh, go ahead and, uh, and email me. That's my contact information. Uh, if you have a, a hankering for some big numbers, you want to look at some graphs, or you want uh, another statistic converted into biscuits, I can do that for you. Uh, so just be in touch via email. Uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Um, we'll be making the recording of today's ceremony available soon, and we're always happy uh, to share our data and help make the case for smart commuting. Um, thank you all for staying a few minutes over time here with us today. Thank you for being here in the first place. Uh, we really appreciate everyone attending. And a big thank you to Mayor Shul, uh, Lindsey Gavin, Suchi Gupta, Paul Straw, and everyone who took the time to be on the call today. Thank you so much. Uh, big congratulations again uh, to our winners. Uh, and thank you all uh, for coming. Uh, thank you to the champion commuters uh, who made this possible and all our partners and sponsors. Thank you. Uh, have a great afternoon and we'll see you next year. Bye-bye.